Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a locus problem with complex numbers. So Z is a complex number and we're trying to find the values of Z for which this equation is true. The absolute value of Z squared minus 1 equals 1. I'm going to show you what the graph looks like at the end because locus is basically a set of points that satisfy a certain criteria and we're going to look at the graph and maybe briefly talk about what it means. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve locus problems. Locus problems are fun and they are usually considered somewhat difficult even though they're not that hard. I classify them as medium and go ahead and check out my lecture videos if you're new to complex numbers and also my classifications. If you disagree, let us know. So we have the square root, I mean the absolute value, which is going to turn into a square root eventually, but the absolute value of z squared minus 1 being equal to 1. So what kind of z will satisfy this? For example, you might say, hey, z equals i is going to work because i squared is negative 1, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, absolute value of negative 2 is not 1. So z equals i is not a solution. We could probably find a bunch of complex numbers, maybe thousands, that are not solutions, but that's not the point. The point is, which complex numbers are solutions? That's what locus means. Make sense? Okay. By the way, the plural for locus is loci. So locus, loci. It's such a weird word like focus and foci. And hocus and hoci. Anyways, hocus pocus, that's another thing. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve these kinds of problems. We're going to replace, and sorry about this a plus pi, no offense, we're going to call z x plus y i. The name of this channel is a plus b i, so hopefully no offense. And for locus problems we do this because we want to get it in a coordinate, coordinated method, like with coordinates, okay? That's why we use x and y, replace z with that, you're gonna get x plus y i squared, and then we're gonna subtract one from it and then take the absolute value and we want this to be one, great. Let's go ahead and square this first, x squared, and then if you square uh, or multiply 2ab, and then minus y squared because i squared is negative 1, minus 1, and then take the absolute value equals 1. Be careful because this is not always the same as this, right? You probably knew that. And by the way, if you're trying to absolute value z squared, you can take the 2 out. But the absolute value of z squared does not become z squared because z squared is not always a real number, right? Make sense? It's a different mentality. So now let's go ahead and put the real parts together and separate the imaginary part. And this will become 1. And now I want to go ahead and use the definition for absolute value. How do you find the absolute value of a complex number? If you're trying to find the absolute value of a plus b i, oops, did I write? I don't know why I write square root instead of absolute value. I, I got stuck on square roots today. So if you're trying to absolute value this, it's the square root of a squared plus b squared. Makes sense? a and b are real numbers, remember? And in this case, these are real numbers, real and imaginary parts. So it will be the square root of x squared minus y squared minus 1 squared plus 2xy squared and that's equal to 1. Great. Where do you go from here? Well we're gonna go ahead and simplify this. To simplify this we could do a couple different things. We could probably just expand everything and then try to simplify that way. I think that'll be the best method. We'll see. I don't know. I'm just going to square this, x to the 4th plus y to the 4th plus 1. Remember, a plus b plus c squared, minus 2x squared, y squared, and then minus 2x squared, plus 2y squared, and then that's it. There should be 6 terms, plus 4x squared, y squared. Interesting. And the whole thing is 1. We can now, I think, get rid of the radical, square both sides, because 1 squared is 1. We can totally forget about this and it's still going to be 1. And now we get something interesting here. Look at that. These two will add up and give us 
what? 2x squared y squared. Nice. And the ones are going to cancel out because remember we no longer have the square root. And then we have this and that, right? Equals zero. Awesome. Now this expression, hmm, looks like a perfect square. It's like x squared plus y squared squared. And this expression is minus 2x squared. Maybe I can put that expression on the right hand side with 2 in front of it like this, right? And then try to understand what this means. Well, in polar coordinates, this should mean something. And we can kind of, and we're going to look at the graph of it, so don't worry about it. But I was trying to maybe convert it from Cartesian to polar. Let's try it. How do you convert from Cartesian to polar? Easy. You replace x with r cosine theta and y with r sine theta. Because if you remember the polar coordinate system, you have a point that is designated as x comma y, right? And this is the theta, the angle, and then the x and y coordinates are basically, and r is obviously the modulus, and this also represents a complex number. And we are talking about complex numbers here, right? Exactly. So you can go ahead and do that. Okay, then from here, let's go ahead and do this. What is x squared plus y squared? It is r squared cosine squared plus r squared sine squared. It's going to simplify nicely. That'll be r squared. You should know this identity, by the way. Also from Pythagorean theorem, you get that, right? Come on, this is x, this is y. It doesn't have to be in the first quadrant. Uh, if it's not, then they're not, they're not lengths, they're coordinates. Same idea with the unit circle. And now this is one thing. What about x squared minus y squared? Good. That also has a nice answer. r squared cosine squared minus r squared sine squared. I can take out r squared and guess what? A double angle formula emerges. Yes. And that's going to equal what? Cosine of 2 theta. Beautiful. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace x squared plus y squared with r squared. So it's just going to be like r squared squared. And on the right hand side, we're going to have 2 times r squared cosine 2 theta. Obviously, this is going to be r to the fourth power. And then, uh oh, come on. Notability, don't do this. And then we can kind of write it like this. And then divide both sides by r squared. This is going to cancel out two of them. And then we'll get r squared equals 2 cosine 2 theta. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. This is the polar form of the equation, which is very nice, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And maybe we'll talk about the name of the graph. If you can remember, recognize it. This is what the graph looks like. I don't know why it doesn't look, uh, I thought it was going to look a little different like this, but like the infinity symbol. Anyways, as far as I know, this is called a lemniscate. If, uh, let me know if that's accurate, but that should be, or is it pronounced a little differently? I lemniscate, lemniscate, I can't remember, but that's something like that. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.